Welcome to session two, our return to school roadmap and illness policies. So on July 24th, I released our return to school roadmap for phases four and five. I know that uh, almost all of our parents have had a chance to at least breeze over it, uh, but it is a 26 page document and I know there's lots in there for you to look at and to read. So today we're going to focus on just a few of the main pieces of that return to school roadmap, specifically focusing on the areas of illness and how that will affect our year. So the big thing is that uh, if you look at our illness policy, if any child or family member has any signs or symptoms of illness, we are going to ask that you remain at home per our screener. Then after 8.30 a.m., once things have quieted down in the office, we ask you to give us a call so we can talk through those signs and symptoms and figure out if it is just something that might be allergies, uh, as we do know that those are up and going this time of year, or is it something more serious like COVID, uh, where we do need you to go see your doctor prior to coming in. So again, if you have any active symptoms, we're asking that you stay home. Some of those symptoms that uh, COVID does uh, display in a person are fevers and chills, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty of breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, which is a really big one and one that um, is sometimes difficult to tell whether that's COVID or somebody just having a sinus headache. Uh, a new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea or rash. All of these signs can be symptoms of COVID and something that we do need to take seriously this year. So if and when your child is absent from school, they need to be free of symptoms for 48 hours prior to returning to school. This also does uh, come into play when a child leaves school because of an illness. So if a child does come down uh, or if a teacher calls Mrs. Clinton or myself to let us know that a child is either A, not feeling well because they have a tummy ache or they have a headache that just doesn't seem to be going away, the student will be moved to the quarantine room and we will be be calling home for that child to be picked up. Our policy is that when we do call home, the, it, the child does need to be picked up within 30 minutes of the call for the safety and comfort of not only the child, um, but for all students within the building. So again, once that child is picked up, they do need to be symptom free for 48 hours without the use of Tylenol, ibuprofen um, during that time. I know sometimes uh, we feel like we need to give that to our students to kind of relieve that pain, but then it does mask those symptoms. So again, 48 hours need to be symptom free. In the event that your child is out of school for more than five consecutive days, we do need a doctor's note for them to return to the classroom. So a student may be out for several reasons for five consecutive days. We did choose that five number though because if it is a common cold or allergies, uh, within 48 hours of being um, under the care of a physician and using allergy medication, uh, those are taken care of. But if there is something that's lingering and you get into day three or four, um, it's you're going to need to see your physician to make sure that the child is okay and that we know what is actually happening with them so that they can return to school um, safe and healthy not only for themselves but our entire community due to this illness policy um, this also extends to staff members so if staff members are not feeling well we fill out the same screener that each of our families fill out every day when they come to st thomas and they also will follow that guideline of being symptom free for 48 hours we know from our survey that we sent this summer that that's something that's important to our families and it's important to us as well but as we look at that and look at a time when our teachers may have to be out of the building we do know that there is already a substitute shortage in the state of michigan if we are unable to find a substitute for our teacher, we will be letting you know by 9 p.m. at night because we will be moving into a period of virtual learning for our families. We know this is not ideal and this is not something that we want to do, but it's the best that we can do under the circumstances. So again, if we cannot find a substitute, we would let you know by 9 p.m. and again 7 a.m. the next morning that we do have to move to a period of virtual learning and that will be on our e-learning hub. 
I also encourage you to go and check out our COVID-19 mapping. So we have two different maps, one for non-COVID and one for COVID. Uh, these maps were created for our, from our safety team this summer, and they map out many different scenarios that you can think of and that you might call in question, well, should I be bringing my child to school? Um, what happens if I do have COVID or what happens if I have these signs or symptoms? Those COVID maps will help you walk through each of those steps. and. Honestly, when you give us a call, we'll be walking right through them with you. So if you have yet to locate those, I encourage you again to print them out, book them, bookmark them on your computer, but you can find them in the Return to School Roadmap, you can find them on our website, and you can find them on the e-learning hub. And again, I encourage you to make sure that you have those handy. So two of the big questions that we do have this year is what happens if I test positive for COVID? Within the return to school plan, there are two different sections that focus on this. Section four is testing protocols for students and staff in responding to positive cases. Section five is responding to positive tests among staff and students. So the big things that you do need to know about this section, and I won't go over all of it because you can take that time to look at that in the return to school plan, is that we will cooperate with the Ingham County Health Department if and when there is a positive case of COVID linked to St. Thomas Aquinas Parish School. This year, we have done everything in our power to make that tracking and contact tracing a little bit easier. All of our, all of our classes this year have assigned seats. So when they are in the cafeteria, they will have assigned seats there. They also have assigned seats with their specials. We have a new policy this year for the bathroom where students are signing in and out so we know who's in the bathroom and may possibly have been exposed at the same time if a student does become positive at St. Thomas. So please know that we will work with the Ingham County Health Department per the executive order and the return to school roadmap that the state of Michigan has released. Please know that if a student or a staff member does test positive for COVID, in order for that child or a staff member to return to St. Thomas, they must have tested negative for COVID-19 and received clearance from the Ingham County Health Department. Uh, this can be in coordination with your primary care physician, but it is Ingham County who will clear you to return to school or to work. So those are two big pieces that it's important for our parents to know as we move through this year. It is also important to note that if we do have a positive case of COVID that happens in the school, we will follow uh, the confidentiality of the American Disabilities Act, but we will make sure that our families know through a form letter that the Ingham County Health Department has created for us to share. Uh, that uh, notice that would go home will not only be through email, it'll be through our emergency system straight to those students in that particular class or those that may have been affected. Uh, but please know that we will be communicating with families if a positive test of COVID is somehow brought into St. Thomas. So when the positive case uh, is found to be at St. Thomas, we also will work with the Ingham County Health Department to work through that period of quarantine. So we know that anyone who is in close contact, which means that you are less than six feet apart for more than 15 minutes, they will be asked to quarantine for 14 days. Uh, those are kind of the big key pieces right there. So right, less than six feet apart, in more than 15 minutes. During our school day, physical distancing is a big piece of that. So throughout our day, we do everything we can to maintain that six feet apart. Um, and yes, we have students who are obviously together for more than 15 minutes a day in their classroom, but we do work on that physical distancing piece to make sure that our students are safe if and when this does arise at St. Thomas. One of the things that will help us, uh, not only with COVID, but with regular illness, is the hygiene. One of the things that we're working on this year is hand washing. We do have different times throughout the day that our students are actually moving into the bathroom. They are working on washing those hands for a full 20 seconds. There's an amazing piece that was done by another church uh, to the Our Father and actually has kids washing their hands 30 to 40 seconds. Uh, but that's a big piece and something that you can help partner with us on at home is really helping remind those students how long 20 seconds is because although it doesn't seem long when you are washing your hands and you're a little person that can seem like forever. We also encourage you to partner with us in teaching our, your student how to either cough or sneeze into their elbow. Again we do know that it's allergy season and some of those things are happening at school um, so please make sure that they're just comfortable and that while they are in this period that they do know how to again cough or sneeze right into that elbow so that they can stay safe um, uh, even with their mask on. So here on this slide, you're gonna see two kiddos who are wearing their masks perfectly. I can tell you that 
all of our students have been working very hard to make sure that they are wearing their masks just the right way. Their masks do need to be hugged tight to the nose. They do need to come under the chin so that way that they are covering all airways. Um, so please make sure that you are checking your student to make sure that that is what's happening. I know many of our teachers covered that during their curriculum night sessions. This is just a quick reminder of that. We do know that some of those gaiters that students are wearing are definitely too loose or do become loose throughout the day. So if that happens to be the case, we would ask you to change over to a face mask for your child. One other bit that we happen to be noticing is that those face masks do need to be washed. Hygiene here is extremely important and as we are battling different seasonal allergies or even the common cold that might be coming through, if a student does have a runny nose, we know it's under the care of a physician and then they have been cleared to come to school, their masks still may get dirty and it's really, really important that we clean those masks and make sure that they are wearing a fresh clean one. Whether that it has been that you bought black disposable masks or that you are continuing to wash or change out the, the material face mask that you have sent with students. So that concludes our return to school roadmap in the illness portion. Uh, next up is going to be additional policies, absences, and how we use the e-learning hub. Thanks for joining.